Apple is betting that the TV will be the preferred viewing device with a new approach to home computing called Pippin. Mark, we've got a Pippin right over here, and when you just look at it, it kind of looks like a video game console. You've got it plugged into the TV set. Yes, Apple had a video game console. But, as with most things involving Apple in the 90s, the story is a little bit more complicated and a lot more interesting than that. These days, it's very rare for Apple to make any mistakes when it comes to product launches. Sure, Apple has its fair share of critics, many of who point to the restrictive, closed nature of Apple's operating systems and the fact that Apple usually charges significantly more than its competitors for comparable hardware as major pain points. Still, nearly everything Apple puts out today turns into a commercial goldmine. For today's story, we're going to look back at a time where almost all of that was the opposite. A time when Apple tried to enter the home multimedia and video game market by opening up its macOS platform to third-party developers. This is the story of how Apple, a toy manufacturer, and a company best known in the U.S. for making cars all came together to create one of the biggest failures in the history of console gaming. This is the story of Apple and Bandai's Pippin Game Console. In the early to mid-90s, Apple experienced a decline in sales, market share, and a general lack of profitability. The success of some of Apple's low-cost computers from the beginning of the decade, like the Apple LC, led to the cannibalization of their higher-priced, high-end models. Making matters worse, Apple introduced three new but very similar-looking machines that led to market confusion since many consumers didn't really understand the differences between them. In hopes of turning their fortunes around, Apple treated the 90s like its college years and began experimenting with all kinds of things including digital cameras, CD players, an AOL-like service called eWorld, and of course, a video game console. Although it was an important, if not the most important feature, Apple didn't design the Pippin architecture just for video games. The Pippin line, named after a smaller and more tart relative of the Macintosh Apple family, would be able to browse the web, use services like Prodigy and AOL, and run interactive multimedia software such as CD-ROM-based encyclopedias. The Pippin was created as an open platform based on the classic Mac OS. Apple didn't intend to manufacture any Pippin devices themselves. Instead, they would license Pippin to third-party developers who would then create and manufacture their own Pippin systems as well as third-party aftermarket add-ons. These companies would have the freedom to differentiate their version of Pippin in the marketplace through internal hardware innovations. However, they would still have to follow Apple's reference designs. Apple did build one demonstration device based on Pippin called Pippin Power Player and use it to demonstrate the platform at trade shows and to the media in order to attract potential software developers and hardware manufacturers. Not long after, Apple had its first suitor. There's only hope. The Power Rangers. Oh yeah? No one can stop us. Just let them try. Okay. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Too hot to handle. You probably know Bandai as the toy manufacturer for the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Sailor Moon, Gundam, and a slew of other properties. What you may not know is that Bandai has also been involved in the video game industry for quite some time. In the 70s, Bandai sold a line of home Pong consoles and their own cartridge-based console. During the 80s, Bandai distributed a number of video game machines like the Arcadia 2001 and even produced a family fun fitness map whose rights would eventually be purchased by Nintendo and rebranded as the Nintendo Power Pad. Now it was the 90s, and Bandai was looking to make a serious foray into the home console market. Then Bandai president and CEO Yamashina Makoto liked the idea of being able to sell what was not only a CD-ROM based game console, but also what would essentially be a low cost Macintosh computer. Apple would create the look of the console, the logic board design, and Pippin software, while Bandai was basically in charge of everything else from manufacturing, distribution, marketing, etc. For unknown reasons, Bandai decided to outsource the actual manufacturing of the console to Mitsubishi, and in the end, invested a total of $93 million into its creation and marketing. In March 1996, the first Apple Bandai Pippin model went on sale in Japan for 64,800 yen. The console had a white color similar to Apple computers and was branded as the Bandai Pippin App Mart. Three months later, a black version of the Apple Bandai Pippin went on sale in the US as the Bandai App World and sold for $599. 
Both models came bundled with a variety of software, and the US version even included a six-month unlimited internet account from Cynet, which alone was about a $150 value. Both models would feature a 66 MHz PowerPC processor, a 144K modem, a 4-speed CD-ROM drive, and outputs that could be connected to a standard TV. Strangely, the operating system was not located in the Pippin's onboard storage. Instead, it's located on the CD-ROMs for each of the Pippin software releases. The benefit of this was that Apple could upgrade the operating system without having to sell new hardware to the consumer. The downside is that once Pippin software releases ended, it became impossible to upgrade to a later operating system. Bandai never upgraded the system software on any of its CD-ROMs beyond Mac OS 7.5.2. So in the end, this feature was never even used. The Pippin's games and software were both generally regarded as being lackluster. Despite being the product of two giant companies, it just wasn't enough of a computer or enough of a game console to pull off either very well. Amongst Pippin's software was anime designer Dragon Ball Z, Gundam Tactics Mobility Fleet 0079, Gus goes to the Kooky Carnival in search of Rant, and Power Rangers Zio vs. the Machine Empire. The Pippin came with a very unique boomerang-shaped controller called the Applejack. There was even a wireless version of it available. There was also the Pippin keyboard with drawing tablet, Pippin modems, a Pippin floppy dock, and a Pippin to Macintosh ADB adapter for connecting Pippin devices to a Macintosh. The Pippin had several forward-thinking ideas for its time. The Pippin was region-free. It could print using the Apple Color Style Rider 2400 and 2500 series printers. And, unlike other game consoles, Pippin releases would be backwards compatible with future models. For all that the Pippin seemed to have going for it, critics were not convinced. The AppMark would only be able to run software designed for the Pippin flavor of the Mac OS at a time when the full and more popular Macintosh platform suffered from a limited selection and late releases. Bandai estimated that the Japanese version of the Pippin would sell 200,000 units its first year and 300,000 in the US. Combined, both units would only go on to sell 42,000 units. Bandai wasn't the only company to sell a Pippin system, although it was the only one to sell them directly to consumers. Katz Media, a software company based in Norway, became the second and last company to sign a license agreement with Apple to produce Pippin systems. Bandai actually ended up producing the hardware for Katz, who would then sell them to the European and Canadian markets. In a lot of ways, Katz Pippin was a far greater success than Bandai's. The Katz Media KMP2000 was sold to hotel chains to put in hotel rooms so that guests could access the internet. It was also sold as a set-top box to be used as an interactive kiosk in Redwall retail stores, and Netface Consortium, a Netherlands company, gave it to many of its 55,000 subscribers to use as a device to shop for products in what the company called the world's first internet shopping mall. When Steve Jobs returned to Apple in 1997, he stopped all Macintosh clone programs, including any further development on the Pippin platform. By mid-1997, Bandai had stopped production on all Pippin models, and in 1998 sold its remaining inventory to Daystar Digital, who sold their remaining Pippins to anyone who would buy them. Once Bandai licensed Pippin from Apple, Apple didn't really make any kind of effort to market the Pippin platform themselves. All of the marketing was to be done by Bandai and Katz Media. To avoid being confused with Apple's Macintosh product line, Bandai and Katz were not even allowed to use the term computer when marketing the Pippin. By the time the Pippin was released, other consoles from Sega, Sony, and Nintendo had already cornered the market. Developers had reservations about working with Bandai and Apple, although there is one developer that I'm sure you've heard of that did give the Pippin a chance. Bungie released Marathon on the Pippin. This was sort of a predecessor to Halo. While Marathon proved that you can have great games run on the Pippin, Many of the titles released for the console were actually educational. One of its most cited features, browsing the web, actually didn't even work all that well, mostly due to how poorly text would render on a TV. Critics also like to point out that the competing Sega Saturn and its separately sold Netlink device had a combined cost of under $400, which actually made it a much less expensive way to browse the web on your TV with a console. The Pippin remains one of Apple's final failures before Steve Jobs returned to help save the company that he co-founded. With its recent success with iOS gaming, Apple has taken a renewed interest in gaming in general. You can be sure that if Apple does make a return to the console market, this time it won't be to fail. It'll be to dominate. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please be sure to subscribe and check out my gaming documentaries playlist. 
If you'd like to help my little channel grow, please consider sharing this video on Reddit and other social media. But most importantly, thank you for watching.